So this morning, we want to build, take this forward and uh, focus in on one very important thing that you and I need to do in order to receive redemption blessings. Let's begin with Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender, who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. That is the Old Testament. Now when you come into the New Testament, it still reads the same. For instance, if you go to Ephesians 1 and verse 3, it says this, Blessed be the God. David said, bless the Lord. Paul is writing, blessed be the Lord, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So he's qualified you. He's made you fit, worthy to participate, to partake, to enjoy your share of the inheritance of blessings that he has made available to his people. What I want to do is very simple now. I want us to just read three incidents in the ministry of Jesus. In Matthew 9, we have a person who was under covenant. I mean, she knew what David knew. That God is healer. God is the one who forgives. God is the one who redeems. She knew that. Because she was a woman under covenant. She must have heard it taught to her. As part of the covenant. But in Matthew 8, you have a Roman saint children who probably was not even aware. But he just saw something happening, two people under the covenant, and he said, I want to come and get some. In Matthew 15, you have a woman who, again, was probably not taught these things, but she saw the benefits that were being given to people under the covenant, and she said, I want to come and get some. What, is the, what was the common denominator in all of these three cases that enabled them to receive? So here's the common thread we see through all of these. It was their faith. That enabled them to receive. And it is no different for you and me today. You and I cannot believe beyond actual knowledge. You and I cannot believe if we don't know. But the problem we have is not lack of knowledge. Because we've been hearing. Three simple ways on how you and I exercise this faith in order to receive our redemption blessings. Three simple things. Number one, enter in to your place of rest. It means that you come into a place where you settle the matter in your heart with the word of God. I'm refusing to give the problem a right to trouble me. We then do what Jesus taught us in Mark 11, 22 to 24. We receive by faith. That means you transact with God by faith. Jesus taught us in Mark 11, 22 to 24, how to do that in the spirit. He said, have faith in God, verse 22. And then with that faith in God, you can do two things. In verse 23, you can speak. In verse 24, you can pray. In verse 23, he said, Whoever therefore will say and will not doubt in his heart, but will believe that what he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. And then the last one. When you and I exercise faith to receive redemption blessings, is we have to contend for it if the enemy attempts to rob you of it. Stay in your place of rest. And don't Alter the fact that you've prayed and asked God and received from God. That will not change. And now you resist the devil. You say, no devil. These are my benefits. My heavenly father has made these available for me. 